Hello and welcome to another Wolf Time gaming video. Today I'm continuing my journey to Blood Bowl and I'm going to be painting up the Black Orcs. They're going a little bit different to what Games Workshop have done with the black and white and we're going to add a little bit of yellow. Very similar to what I've already done with Varric Gulchur if you've already seen him. But this time we're going to be painting this team. Before we get started on that though, as usual, let's get that kettle on. So once I've got the orcs actually built and stuck on the bases, I've then added a little bit of um, fine sand just to the base uh, to give the give it a little bit more texture than the plain base because we are going to be adding on quite a lot of static grass towards the end of the video, you'll see that. But we added this on first and then gave it a really good base coat of Games Workshop's Grey Seer. I'm then going to start painting the actual miniature itself and this time I'm starting with a little bit of a mix between Death World Forest and Flash Kits Yellow. It's approximately a 50-50 mix, doesn't have to be dead on, but what I have done is tipped Flash Kits Yellow into a Death World Forest pot. Um, it's about a half full Death World Forest pot, which gives me a mix that I can use for all of these orcs and all of the Gretchen, so all the skin stays the same essentially. Once I've actually got that done, I'm then going to be using a shade called Beltan Green. I'm going to stick this over the whole miniature, both the Gretchen and the Orc. And what this does is sink straight into the recesses and adds a really, really nice dark green sort of a colour. As you can see, it's already starting to take effect and look really, really effective. It does add quite a bright sort of a colouring, so we are going to bring that back slightly on the raised areas that you'll see in just a moment. But I think, you know, you'll agree with me, it starts to look quite effective straight away. At this stage we're going to be bringing that green sort of a colour back and we're going to be using exactly the same colour pot that we did on the first part which is the Death World Forest and Flash Kits Yellow. And we're going to be picking out all of the raised areas around the miniature both on the Gretchen and the Orc so it's, you know, they've all got the same colour skin essentially. Um, as I said it's only the raised areas that you need to concentrate on um, and then it works really really well because it kind of blends all it all into one another because you've got that uh, that shade over the top and it works really really well and it's a really quick way and easy way I think of getting really good looking orc skin I've played around with some contrast paints to try and get the same sort of an effect um, and it hasn't really worked so I, I'm sticking with this technique and I think it looks really really effective and I hope you kind of like it too it's uh, very simple um, to be able to to pick up and and do yourself at this stage I'm going to start painting some of the fabric and the uniforms and bits of metal around the miniature and I'm starting off with all the black areas essentially so I'm going uh, what I'm doing is actually using a uh, contrast black Templar to paint the shoes um, any of the sort of like metal work around the miniature because we, we'll obviously add a little bit of silver to that in a little while but to start with I really wanted to have that black base for these bits and pieces and the contrast black templar works really really well because it essentially um, isn't this that sort of really dark black paint it goes a really sort of I suppose a light black or a really dark grey it also pulls away from those raised areas and sinks into the recesses nicely so adds a lot of shading in without you having to do too much work and the next paint I'm going to be using is uh, Iandan Yellow and this is essentially the team colours that I'm going with so for the actual um, Gretchen and Black Orcs you just, uh, I'm trying to pick out some of the bits of metalwork on the miniature to, to be a br big bright yellow sort of a colour now with the Orcs I'm sticking with sort of the breastplates and things but with the Gretchen there's a few little bits and pieces on them they are a very different mini so you can add them essentially where you'd like on that mini I think you don't have to stick with this at all if you don't want to now the fabric areas I'm starting with a uh, contrast wildwood again another contrast paint absolutely fantastic because you don't have to add a lot of shading in very little work to get a really really effective uh, looking leather work or fabrics and dark fabrics and that sort of thing now the contrast wildwood I find is a really really nice mid-brown um, it's not too light it's not too dark very good at 
just if you would need a brown color you know this is sort of the color I go for now I am going to add in a different slightly different colored brown to add a little bit of interest around the miniature on the strapping and things but the first stage is essentially to paint everything with this brown and then I can go back afterwards and pick out all of those little bits that um, I wanted to be slightly different and give each individual Orc or Gretchen a little bit more character because they're all slightly different and you haven't got any miniatures that are exactly the same then and that's what I find really important with this and this is what I'm doing now I've grabbed a little bit of Mournfang brown it's a really light brown it's just a base coat this time not a contrast paint and I'm going around the minis picking out a few little bits and pieces the Gretchen was his belt around his, his waist there and I'm going with the same thing for the um, the actual big Orc himself and there's a few bits of strapping around his back, um, a little bit of, on the gloves, that sort of thing really. And all you're doing is adding a different shade of brown to these different areas, so not all your miniatures are going to look exactly the same. I decided at this point it was a good stage to actually add some of the silver to the model. So I'm going around picking out all the buckles and things that um, would be metal work and just taking my time with a little bit of lead belcher paint there's a few spikes and things you could do the horns on the front of his face mask as well if you wanted to but i wanted more of a, a horn color like a natural sort of browns and things so i'm going with that for the horns but you could do that you could pick out bits of the face mask itself i mean the main thing really is the buckles and things that are around it um, purely because they, I think they would be the bits that get worn a little bit more and they would show a little bit of the metal work which is again why I painted that fist in the orc's right hand there just added a little bit of silver paint, not a lot, just a little bit of a dry brush around him uh, just to add that bit, bit more, uh, make it look a little bit more worn and make it look a little bit more realistic now picking out the claws and bits and pieces around the model is really really important you don't want them as green so I grabbed a little bit of Zandri dust to do this and all I'm doing is picking out the claws on the, the hands um, and the hands on the Gretchen as well and I'm also adding a little bit just to the horns on that face mask as we'd already previously talked about I was going with some sort of natural colours and the, the Zandri dust is perfect for that now to blend some of these browns together I've grabbed some Agrax Earth shade and I'm just essentially sticking this shade all over the Mournfang brown to blend it nicely into the contrast wildwood. I've also gone around the horns on the front of the face there to, to blend those sort of the Zandri dust and the browns together and I find this works really really well especially if you don't do any sort of wet blending or anything like that previously you just stick a couple of colours together stick the shade over the top and it does pull it together quite nicely now the, the actual shoes I wanted to stand out quite a lot and I wanted those to, to stay white so I've, what I've done is added a little bit of null oil around the shoe so it's dropped into the recesses as you can see there and then while I've got the null oil out I'm going around all of those lead belcher areas because what it does it dulls the lead belcher down ever so slightly and makes gives it more of a realistic silver feel I do find that some silver paints stick out too much and this really does pull that colour back and give it a more realistic metal feel now the basing, as you can, you can see here, I'm going with a brown, uh, you can do whatever you want to, I'm going with Rhinoxide, he's my, the, my chosen sort of base colour, um, I'm not going to add any shading or anything like that to the base because I'm going to put a static grass all over the top of the bases, but I wanted to have a more realistic feel to it because static grass does get knocked off and things, so I didn't want to have that plain plastic underneath, so as we talked about at the beginning of the video, you had the sand on there already with a nice base coat over the top, you then stick the Rhinox side on which gives you that muddy dirt feel now you could uh, continue that onto the edges of the base but I like to have my, my bases black because I do find that it frames the miniature really really well and makes the miniature and the base pop from the table and pop from the uh, the actual pitch really nicely um, obviously if you like to have that fully immersive experience and like it to be completely blended in stick with the browns and stick with the the soil and that sort of a color and that way you get that that sort of an effect rather than where i'm going for more of a, a standout sort of a feel now for the um actual static grass you can see i'm, I'm just popping it on there um, it's really really easy to apply just get a little bit of pva glue stick it all around the base and then add the uh, the static grass. You can see I'm using tweezers. I'm not using any sort of applicator 
to, to add that to because I didn't want uh, it all standing up like really really neatly I wanted it to look a little bit messy like a football pitch would now, to add a little bit more into this the you know the blood bowl um, pitch would have had white markings all over so I've actually got grabbed a little bit of white paint and just add that added that to the base just to add a little bit more interest so it's not just grass and there you have it that's the models complete I think these look absolutely fantastic I really do think the yellow pops from the green and the black really really nicely adding that little bit of a silver dry brush over the top of the, the some of the black areas especially the you know the armor plating and things really does add to that more realistic feel it looks like it's been painted black in the past but it's taken so much of a battering that you've got all of the the, the silver is now sort of shining through from the metal work underneath once you've done that of course you just can you just keep going just repeat with all the other miniatures you can see there's a few different color variations different styles I've gone with I have painted some of the the shoulder pads and the pauldrons yellow to really stand out on some of the orcs as you can see there you know you I've got the uh, little Gretchen with a it's fabric sort of a top I just left that the base coat and just stuck Agrax earth shade straight over the top of it you know you've got your your, your moon hat there which is bright yellow the, the all the orcs and all the Gretchen really do come together really really nicely and they look absolutely fantastic on the tabletop thanks so much for watching guys make sure you do hit that subscribe button because I've got loads more videos coming your way uh, but I really do hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one